Welcome to Metaphysical with remote viewer John Pavanko and me, investigative researcher Rob Counts. In our last episode, we talked about staircases to nowhere that have been spotted in national parks and woods and forests around the world. This time, we'll be bringing you the most amazing story we found from a CDC official who attempted to track one of these staircases. And John will tell you the remote viewing data he and his team got back when they tried to find more out about these strange occurrences. So let's get started with this metaphysical show. Weird stuff in the woods. Weird, weird stuff in the woods. Yes. Now, just to review, we kind of went over the gist of this, how it started in our last episode. Go check that out. Uh, if you haven't seen it, we talked about a lot of different interesting things. Uh, it all started on a Reddit post where a uh, search and rescue official basically talked about some of his strangest stories that he's had. And, and the last bullet, the strangest thing that he brought up was these odd staircases that appear around the search and rescue teams as they're going into the national parks. And some of the, some of the common themes throughout the world, apparently about these appearing staircases is uh, basically a person feels scared once they approach them. Um, it's about, of course, you know, that could be, that could be anything. It could be energy behind the, the staircase, or it could just be them just finding it strange and, and getting frightened. Um, they're usually about 10 to 50 miles into the woods when you stumble on them. Um, there has been reports of losing time when you climb the stairs. People or people become harmed from climbing the stairs and interacting with them. Um, associated most of the time, not always, with missing person cases. So they're usually found when people are looking for missing persons and there is a staircase that appears. Um, a fairly new and modern phenomenon is, but there are ancient stairs, is the mystery surrounding them, you know, is kind of now popular. It's becoming popular again. It's been rediscovered, you know. And um, what's strange is some of the staircases that are found are, are very old, and some of them are very, very new, like pristine marble staircases or something, you know, that are just in the middle of the woods. Some of them are regular staircases. Some of them have been spiral staircases. There's been a whole slew of different um, stories that I myself have looked into. Um, now, the legend is that these mysterious staircases act as gateways, potentially, and lead to different dimensions and or hell. Um, some people and or hell yeah <laughs> right <laughs> they lead to different dimensions and or hell <laughs> <laughs> you know also another dimension um so you know they some feel that there could be extraterrestrials attracted to these abandoned staircases and um you know it's just strange why why are some ancient and, and why are some new right i don't know i mean this is one of those things in the woods that I really, really, really want to find. I mean, I've come across a lot of things. There was actually this, um, well, actually the weirdest thing that people find in the woods is actually porno magazines, if you know that. I mean- yeah. Just like strewn about, like randomly? Well, I guess stashes. I mean, there was this one, I think it was on Godlike Productions website, where there was a whole, um, there was a whole post chat about weird things in the woods. And most people were saying, well, yeah, I found a stash of porno mags. I found a stash of porno mags, et cetera, et cetera. And you know what's really weird is on two occasions, I found the same thing. Like literally, like when, even when I was in Australia, Pete and I, when I was in Australia, were out, you know, looking for weird stuff. We, we go in this cave, this really deep cave, and literally on the wall are taped pictures from porno magazines. So people in, were just going there the and like, you know, it sounds like yeah. a bad eighties movie. It's a really, it's a really bad eighties movie. Yeah. 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 But outside of that, um, you know, I've come across weird things in the woods. There's this one place around Mount Shasta. There's no staircase, but a, a disappearance happened. Guy disappeared. And um, I went to the location to check it out because our data was saying that he got sucked into a portal. I mean, we really? do a lot. Yeah, yeah. We do a lot 
we've done a lot. In fact, I, I did this whole thing when I was working with National Geographic, uh, this one specific producer, we were doing, we were trying to develop this one show around missing people. Um, like we're pro predominantly doing cold cases because they're easier to work with remote viewing as opposed to, you know, people disappearing in the moment because remote viewing can take some time mm. with sessions and analysis and stuff like that. So we were doing this stuff and nearly every, well, every single case there was literally conventional disappearances where somebody would be, um, murdered, abducted and murdered, or they would go commit suicide somewhere, or they were just running away, right? right? Those are the conventional disappearances. When you get out to remote viewing people who have disappeared in the woods, the game totally changes. Oh, really? Yes. Now, yes, you do get those things, the conventional things, but will you start to get a mix of other weird things that happen to them? And it's it's outlandish. It's absolutely outlandish. When you remote view people who disappear from cities, totally different than people who remote view in the woods. You get aliens, believe it or not. Like this shows up in the data. You're going, wait a second. I got to retask this. I got to retask the remote viewers because now all of a sudden I'm getting aliens taking people into underground bases. I mean, and that's the predominant data. Or you get, well, there was a portal and the person got sucked into it in the woods in the woods and then you have like the occasional well they got eaten by a cougar or a bear right you get the occasional that stuff too and you know when you're a seasoned remote viewer and seasoned in working in projects you're looking for answers to thing and things and the answers to things that you really want the answers that you really want are the conventional side you want to you want it to go the path of um, this person was abducted by somebody, by some person, yeah, of course. because it makes sense to the world that we live in. Now, when you get data that across the board is completely, utterly, totally strange and you keep retasking it, you're like, OK, there's something really messed up going on in the woods. There's something really messed up. Now, think about this, too. There are foundations that are set up to try to investigate why so many Native American women and children are going missing. There, there's a ton of them, tons, tons. And it's a phenomena that nobody knows why what's happening. This is right now you're talking about. Right now. I mean, right now, Native first culture people on in the United States are going missing like mad. Why? So when we looked into that, it's easier to make the, these particular people disappear because not as many people are watching them. It's like a, there's smaller... that. but it's not, it's not necessarily, they're not conventional disappearances. They are, I mean, I hate to go into this cause it's just so outlandishly crazy, but our data, our data basically says they are abducted and taken into underground types of bases where you have different types of beings aliens, as well as, you know, some black project stuff that are doing things to them. I, it just sounds absolutely absurd and crazy. Um, but I mean, that's what our data says when we always expect the conventional, because that's what we've always worked on. And then all of a sudden it changes into this. So, I mean, I, one time I went into the woods because of this one area uh, around Mount Shasta, because a person had disappeared and our data was literally, well, they got sucked into a portal in this one area. And I know exactly where they went. So I went and investigated it. And the legends about this site are that the portal will make a person feel at ease and sleepy. And uh, it's sort of an ill at ease feeling. Um, and then they'll go lay down by the creek and something weird will happen and they'll just disappear. They'll disappear into a portal that's in that area. So I went to that area and as I was walking into it it was so creepy i really? couldn't tell you it's like the forest it had that vibe of the forest closing in there were some like it's right next to this campground there were there was like a uh, a table set up with full birthday party regalia all over it it was a, like a picnic table there was a birthday cake and, and party hats but nobody was there. Dude, that's almost mm -hmm. as weird as the random staircase is found in the middle of the forest. <laughs> nobody was there. And then in the next campsite right next to that was just a lone massive axe 
leaning against the table. It was so dude. Come creepy. on, that's the that's like a serial killer like, like painting was, or something. Exactly, it was so weird. And so I get to the the area where the portal is, and literally this feeling comes over you of just peacefulness. Like you just want to lay down next to the creek and fall asleep. Mm. And that's what our data showed was that the guy who disappeared felt that feeling and did just that. And that's when he disappeared. And so and that's God, you didn't fall for it. I didn't, I knew I was like, this is, this is right. wrong. This is a wrong, this, this peacefulness is completely, totally wrong. It felt wrong. Like there was evil underneath it. Weird. Yeah. So there's weird stuff in weird stuff, weird energies that go okay, on so, in the forest. Did you happen to task who was behind the portal? Is this uh, is this a black ops thing? Is this alien beings? Is this a, an occult thing? Is this a other dimensional thing? What's well, it, it, it? Our data was showing it was this natural earth energy area, natural earth energy area that produced those specific effects and then sucked a person out. But okay, but you were feeling evil behind it. So right. Well, okay. So there are it? other stories. There are other stories right in that area, around that area, that that native peoples, first cultures, claim that there are dog men type beasts who live in the forest right around there. So that could have been associated, you know, that feeling could have been associated with that, that evilness. All right. Well, that, that does it. In one of our next episodes, we're getting into dog man. Yeah. We got to blow the top off of him. Probably yeah. do some dog man hunting out yeah. here in Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. That probably won't go well. <laughs> No, it's not going to go well. <laughs> well, I, would, I actually was doing, you know, as far as the National Geographic stuff goes, there were there were these um, people that I were working with that wanted to do um, a TV series, a reality series, which is not really real, on Dogman. They never. And, and I was like getting involved in it, but they didn't believe that it was real. Like all our remote viewing data, yes, this is real. And it's a dangerous situation. They didn't believe it was real. And that turned me off to it. They wanted to, a lot of the people that have these experiences have PTSD mm. from it. And, yeah. and they wanted to play that aspect, that emotional, that high emotional aspect, which just wasn't cool. It turned you it off. Cool. Yeah. Turned me off. Yeah. And most, most of what these mainstream um, TV shows try to do is downplay and or um, debunk these things. There's yeah. like, even even the like Finding Bigfoot series was like, it was such utter BS really. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. the whole thing, like, yeah, you know, you, you get these, you can almost tell it's scripted by how they're, how they're like setting everything up, even if yeah. the people aren't necessarily, but they're like somebody behind the scenes, the producers or something is doing stuff, you know? And yep. it's like they fall for the same thing every episode and never find a thing. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I've had experience with these productions quite a bit, and there's a lot of not real to them as far as like what the producers want to do. Yeah. And you have to fight against it. And I flat out, I got, I got offered a, a series at, uh, I won't say the network yeah. of six six episodes, a full season for myself, green lit out of the gate because I had worked with this person before. And um, they wanted me to do something that would be faked so that we could get another season before we even, before I even agreed to it. You know, like if, if something doesn't happen, they were saying, then we'll do this. So we'll fake this aspect so that we get another season out of it. I'm like, no, thanks. I'm not going to do Yeah. That. I mean, it, it, there's no need because you don't even need to fake stuff. Like you there's don't. So weird stuff out there that why would we need to fake anything? Like we just well, need to report. But I'll it. tell you what the problem is. The problem is the production model. Their production model is totally messed up for finding really good and interesting things and capturing it on camera because but they want to go in. They want to go in with a full camera crew, spend yeah. a day. Like the dream for a producer is one day per episode because they, they save a lot of money, right? Yeah. So, so to get good paranormal stuff on camera, you got to spend a good couple weeks 
Least, and that yeah. just doesn't go into their budgets. No, it just doesn't work. No, and it's 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 yeah. Also, like it's a research problem too. Right. Like they're, they're spending all of this money on camera crews and all of that. And it's like, if you just do more research around this stuff, you can find a way to make it interesting. That's real and true. Right. Where, you know, you don't have to right. fake stuff. Right. You know? Exactly. You're going to find weird stuff when you, you go looking for it. You're going to find it. I mean, you're going to find it. Right. Yeah. You know, it's really about, you know, for all these shows, it's the act five, the last act yeah. of each show. Like you have to produce some type of something. In but a hook. I get it. Yeah. You gotta like, a hook. There's a, there's a way to do that and tell the story that, you know, right. Well, you know what I found is that, okay. On the remote viewing side, what we do is, is we will first remote view a phenomena and we'll quite often find that there's nothing there, but when there is something there, what we'll do then is we'll remote view how, and where we capture the best evidence. It works every time. Right. It works every time. And the <laughs> weirdest, weirdest stuff happens to me. When right, I can't, right. I can't even describe this stuff. It's just bizarre. And, oh, you know, man, it, yeah, you know it's like, when we I start. Think, I think we've got to just like, I don't want to do this on network anymore. I yeah, know. Like, it's such a disaster. Yeah. Because their production model is it's constrained well, and, and, and it's way more fun and, and and it'll be real if we do it and at least exactly. it's like you know exactly so i'm really looking yeah. forward to doing some expeditions uh, on metaphysical when uh when the time comes it's gonna be fun it's coming it is coming <laughs> oh it's coming yeah um okay so so yeah like the the cdc uh you know um case here is really interesting so the the vanishing staircase okay so th this is the 1940s so perhaps in the 1940s you know the cdc was a little bit more trustworthy not to get political or anything just saying like you know and um so this there's a cdc specialist and he settled his camp near um a staircase in the woods after learning about them all right and uh, the next morning he wakes up and he noticed that the staircase had moved 50 meters from where it originally was. And it had black burn marks on the ground where it was previously, apparently. That's weird. Okay. The staircases moved from one place to another every other evening, leaving a burnt spot. And in a week or so, totally vanished. Researchers say that the staircases emitted a frequency but they're still unsure of the receivers. Researchers? That's what it says. Researchers so researchers say, well, say that they... the staircases were emitting a frequency. So whoever was looking into this case with him, I guess. So so why did the CDC guy go out there in the first place? Where did this report first first? Yeah, it was in it's in one of these articles that uh, one of these many articles that I found about this. And it was one of the more interesting cases That's, well okay so 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 it moved every night and they found that it emitted frequencies yeah animal mutilation well that's curious so okay so uh, this is after the roswell crash uh, okay so the, we'll read it from here so this is the original so when a cdc officer who was a specialist in researching infectious disease in the case of animal mutilation after the roswell crash in the 40s learned the vanishing learned of the vanishing staircases in the woods i think this was written by someone who does not speak english well <laughs> from another country or something or it was translated anyway they settled their camp near the random staircase in the forest where they spent the whole day and night. Next morning, they woke up. Staircase was not there. There was a black burn spot. They found the exact same staircase 50 meters away from the spot, and they were shocked about how it moved there. They decided to keep researching them. The wood of the staircase was harder and stronger than any wood available in the world. It wasn't even scratchable. The staircase moved 50 to 60 meters every other night, leaving a burn spot, and after a week or so, it vanished. Yeah. So the, you know what? Okay. Random. Here's my explanation. Yeah. Here's my explanation for this. So, so after Roswell, 1940s, this was a UFO that was cloaked, but for some reason they could not cloak the darn staircase. 
And every time they moved the ship and opened up their little, you know, staircase to get out of it, they left a burn mark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a great, great explanation for that. Yeah. I didn't know that story. I mean, uh, we haven't re remote viewed that. And well, maybe we should. It's hard to tell yeah. whether or not this case is actually legitimate either, right? Um, but what is legitimate is um, trying to remote view some of these cases and figure out like what, what's going on and what happened. And, and I do think that each of them are different. More specific information, the better. But you did some remote viewing on this, right, John? Yeah, we did some. I mean, the, like, like I say, the hard part about this is that we have... You can't just task remote viewers on what are the what are these random creepy staircases in the forest there for? Because for one thing, you don't really know if there are truly random creepy staircases everywhere in the forest that are the same, the same mm. thing. I mean, it is a random it's, creepy thing to find one. It's a case um, by case thing, is what you're and saying. It is a case by case thing. And the other thing too is it's a little bit less desirable to task on somebody's story than it is to task on a photograph. So that, so like a photograph is the best thing to task on. And really? Then it's, yeah. It's the best thing. Tasking on somebody's story about it. It can be a little bit difficult because um, remote viewing, when you task, you want to come from more knowns, knowns, like more solid knowns than semi-solids like when you get to stories about things it, it it can be the remote viewers can get into the story about what somebody has concocted yes. and explain the story without going into it's concocted and it take it can take a lot of data before you get to the point of figuring it out that it's fake and there's right? like in there's story. human like thought process and intention behind stuff which can confuse exactly you, I would imagine right right it's like an energy signature and it's there and you're like trying to shake it off to figure out what's going on exactly like um daz daz smith who's a long time remote viewer um had run this one particular project where he created basically daz's ufo abduction event he just made the story up wrote it down on a piece of paper, and then he tasked remote viewers on it. And the remote viewers described the story if it, as if it were real, right? So you have to be careful in the way that you task things and what you task on with remote viewers. To get back accurate data. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that, so you know, what we did was we looked at um, some of these uh, photographs and just tasked on some of them. So, and an interesting thing actually shows up when we start to look into them. Like they're different locations, they're different things. Now, when you get to, I think it's the Etruscan pyramid. Mm. Um, at, oh yeah, the sacrifice area. That, the sac well, okay. So what we got on that literally was a place of, a very ancient place of ritual and sacrifice. So it did. So there's blood. There was blood flowing on that structure. Mm -hmm. Now think about this. If you came across this in a forest and you don't know what it's for, but it is literally imbued with the energy of sacrifice and blood, you are going to get a creepy feeling here. Okay. So mm -hmm. there's this one show, one show. If you ever watch this show, Ghost Adventures, yeah, yeah, um, of course. Yeah, with those with those guys, and they would lock themselves into. Yeah. Now that was a good production model. Sure. I like that one. Like they would lock themselves in an, in an environment with full of ghosts, and there was this one place that they kept going back to. It was like, it was an old restaurant. Yeah, those guys. It was an old restaurant, and the restaurant used to be a slaughterhouse, and they got so much weird, like evil stuff happening there that they kept going back. Now, the reason why that place was so haunted was because when you have a place where there's tons of ritual sacrifice or a slaughterhouse, you get tons a, portal, of death. a portal opens up. Yeah. You, you get a portal that opens up. Portals open up in cemeteries. If you go to a cemetery, they're, they're birthing and death portals. 
to it's like it's kind of like um the false doors that they'll put in uh in tombs in ancient egypt yes where where it's it's a guidepost for the dead to go through after they put them in their place right this is the same with slaughterhouses an energetic portal opens up and you can get all sorts of funky stuff coming and going from there well that's what we found with this pyramid is that if you came across this middle of the forest nobody's really seen it before you would have dark beings light beings whatever interacting with you because there's a portal that's been opened up there that's that's basically what it is now when you get into these other places you know you get a, these other staircases in the woods some of them are just foundations from homes there's not a lot to them but some of them have an energy about them like it's kind of like haunted haunted objects right you know i was telling you in another another episode when i was um we were filming and i was staying in this one place this one house they brought the pieces of the house from the from the midwest to put together but it was still haunted it brought the ghosts with them <laughs> yeah yeah right so these things they don't leave they won't leave so you know you you're if you stepped into somebody's home that if you if you went into the forest and there's a staircase there you're kind of stepping into somebody's home even the, though the home is no longer there mm. you know if, if they really died there concept. right if they died there um if they they're lingering around there they're gonna mess with you they're gonna haunt you they are going to haunt you um i had a um my brother who lives in vermont he just moved into this one house and just before he moved in uh this house was connected to another house and just before he moved in the residents that lived in the other house that owned the house that my brother moved into her husband just died and and my brother was seeing weird phenomena in mm. the house so he asked if we'd remote view it so i'm like okay i'll remote view it i viewed it i was getting this basically getting this woman's husband who was very concerned about her very concerned about the house and protecting it and wanting to make sure my brother was all right so that night i went to sleep and right as i was going to sleep i had just gone into hypnagogic place this the face of this being came right up to me and stuck its fingers on my mouth like this its finger on my mouth to tell me to shut up and pushed me down into the bed like literally i was getting pushed into the bed it was like this physical thing this this ghost wanted me not to go into the house psychically did not want me to talk about it or anything so these beings in their protection of what they consider their space I mean I think that's where a lot of the creepy vibes come from because I think a lot of these staircases were likely connected to somebody's structure at some point that they were mm. emotionally invested in. That's really interesting. And yeah. I mean and it makes total sense because it's like the it's like the owner of a of an object dictates a lot right. of the, the the energy of the object itself. I mean I'm not saying that there aren't weird staircases that appear and disappear out in the forest because like i said before think about like the the bridgewater triangle and the weird phenomena mm. that occurs in those types of locations and when you get out into nature and the earth energies and going off trail there are, there are locations where there are portals where there are strange energies that converge and then you know think about this too um you get out to the forest and and you find people who are doing satanic type rituals you right. know there's stories of that stuff that's going to imbue an energy and and i'm sure like if there's an old structure in a house i mean you find these abandoned houses and people go in there and do satanic ceremonies and they paint you know whatever um the upside down star or whatever on the walls and stuff like that i don't know much about that Pent pentagram stuff pentagrams yeah that's what they're yeah. called and um and that is going to draw that energy to it you know and i think these locations as far as i've seen so far 
I'm not saying it is this across the board because every single one is different that you find it's, it's either um, going to be an old sacrificial site or a new sacrificial site. People still do this stuff out in the forest away from others for, you know, to gain their own personal power. And that is going to draw that dark energy in, open a portal to another realm. People can open portals to other realms, dark realms. Well, you know, too, uh, something interesting about what you said is um, like when we're, when, when we start talking about ghosts too, I found that there's sort of two different types of ghosts. One is almost like a, a memory like a like a signature of something right. that happened over and over again in the past that's just playing out over and over again and even though it's there it's almost like and and it is there's a part of it that's conscious it's almost just like the replaying of a of a videotape over and over again of something yeah, going on exactly and then there's the type that's more like a being is stuck right and they're angry or they're scarred right. and they right. can't leave and so they're 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 taking it out on individuals that are in the in the in the area in the basic area. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I see I see the same thing. Sort of like it's like they're in um, a loop. Some yeah. some are in a loop, and some are more conscious. Right. It's kind of like a piece of them was left behind. Shoot, you know, I remember when my when my grandmother died. Like she was she was constantly. I don't know, for a while going around looking for her purse, right? She was looking for her purse that I think probably had cigarettes in it or something. And she was trying to find her purse, you know, but it was like this aspect, this edge, this sliver of her energy that was stuck in that motion, in that mm. realm. Right. Um, and I think, I think that you find this stuff with, with these staircases, you know, mm. I think that that is ultimately what you find. And just also people just, do put weird things in the woods people will just dump stuff in the woods as well i mean staircases i don't know but some that one looked like it was probably somebody's i don't know went over a little creek or something something that somebody just dumped in the woods people dump everything out there if they can mm. so yeah i mean i think about that one uh the the etruscan pyramid site and i think about the energy around that was just, it was pretty heinous, right? It was pretty dark yeah. because, you know, when you, when you ritually sacrifice, like for one thing, people who are involved in ritual are focused, like they're focused in this weird prayer state. It's an occult right? thing. Yeah. It's like a cult thing. When I lived, I lived at a Zen center for about six years and inside the place where we all meditate the energy was so focused. It was so like it was when you stepped in there, the silence was deafening because people go in there to be in silence. So if you have a group of people in the woods that year after year doing ritual sacrifice, that's going to be the focus, right? It's going to be creepy, creepy, creepy as all heck as well because of all the blood that's been spilled. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that you're just going to find a lot of weird, different stuff. It's not going to be the same thing across the board, though. Yeah, I, you know, I still wonder, I, you know, it's such a strange thing that a, a search and rescue guy would have brought this up. Because, right. you know, you're, you're kind of, we're talking about missing people, and, and it's almost as if the staircases are related to missing people. I mean, what if people are coming across these staircases and they're, they're like, that's weird. Let me go explore. They walk up at never seen again. I mean, right. I think that's why this idea is caught on so much is like, it's not just, it's not just the staircases appearing. Yes. That's strange for sure. But it's in the context of a search and rescue guy who's trying to track people down who are mysteriously disappearing. Oh, and by the way, there's random staircases along right. the way that anyone would find curious and be like, I'm going to go walk up this thing in the middle of a forest. And right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, okay. So here's, so when we were looking at this one disappearance around the Shasta area, this, this, this portal seemed to exist just up in the air uh, at a certain angle um, 
that you could like throw a rock into, right? It would just be that kind of distance. So what if, literally, what if you built a staircase to, to that one portal? of them? Right. What if some people knew that there were portals in certain areas and they wanted to make access easier because they figured out how to use them. So they built staircase into it. I mean, I don't know. I'm the, I'm the king of ridiculous explanations. <laughs> no, I mean, we don't know. Right. And right. Or, or what if it is some sort of metaphysical explanation where it's like, no pun intended, where it's like, you know, actually there, there is a portal there, but then there's also some type of, um, there's also some type of phenomena around the portal that happens with it. I mean, right. the idea of, I mean, the idea of weird stuff appearing in forests has been around since people have been telling stories. I mean, right. the, the old witch in the forest that has a shack and tries to lure children in to cook them, you know, right. like, like that, that's that those stories came about because that stuff actually happened. Right. I, I think a lot of people don't, they think, oh, it's just a, it's just an old wives tale to keep kids from going into the woods. But I've, I've met people that talked about witches in forests specifically and why they hang out there and, and have their own personal experiences with that. Why, why do they hang out there? I think it's it's the seclusion. I think they can do uh -huh. more of the stuff that they want to do in an area where they're not going to be bothered. They right. can lure things in to do, you know, whatever it is. And and um, yeah, I think it, you know, it's like when you have it when there is an evil force, right? Let's say you know, and I'm not saying all witches, quote unquote. Like some people call themselves witches, and I'm like, you're not a witch. Like that's. Right. Like you're talking about like medicine or herbs. Right, right. That's like, it's like normal medicine man stuff. Like not like, you know, or the study of that, not right. witchcraft. Like witchcraft yeah. is, you know, when, when you have evil somewhere, evil tends to try to hide from the light. Right. It, it's a right. natural, you know, and, and we're not talking necessarily about like the, the, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the po politicians that are really good at talking in front of a camera. Like this is a different type of like dark evil. Right. They tend right. to hide away from that and, and being alone and, or in a secluded area keeps them in the cover from the cover of that light. Right. And, right. um, you know, it, the, the types of things that could potentially happen in the woods it's the perfect cover for, for any of that. I mean, look, right, the, like right. we're, you know, we don't know what that looked like before, but you know, the Etruscan site, why was it in the middle of the woods? I mean, was it woods at that time? We don't know, but like, it makes sense that it would be in a place where it was not so obvious, you know? Mm, definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, I, you know, get, get into Wiccan, Wiccan religion, um, the more earth-based type religions, there's nothing evil, wrong about those um and they will do stuff in the woods because of the earth energies and connection to yeah, there's natural natural elements um and i think i think a, you know a lot of it's kind of weird you know when you get into this whole like edges of of cities situation where you begin to have woods and abandoned buildings is where you find like the darker almost the darker, darker stuff, like the dark satanic type stuff where, mm -hmm. where kids who are experimenting in a sense, or people are just, you know, doing weird stuff are going in and doing rituals in some of these houses. And so some of these, I don't know. It's like, it's it, unless like when you get out into the woods and you're talking about like 30 miles into the woods and you yeah. find these things, it's like, you would have to be a little bit more serious about whatever craft you're doing in order to do it, because I definitely think that some of these sites have been co-opted to a certain degree by people doing darker type rituals. And that's the vibe around it as well. So I think you've got, I think you've got number one, ghosts from abandoned, destroyed buildings, and the staircases mm -hmm. are still there that are messing with people that find them. I think you've got potentially some earth energy portal location built on top of that 
right, where people potentially are disappearing, <laughs> stairways to portals, guys. Then you have also the more serious ones that find these locations in the wood and kind of use them as their evil pulpit, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think you've got just like an expansive explanation. And then you have just the random stuff you find in the woods and somebody got freaked out about it and wrote a creepy pasta. Yes. Our, our favorite stories. Our favorite stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is not all the same thing, I think. I don't think it is. I, I agree. I think that there's a lot of different things going on with these. Um, I, I'm I'm just curious, honestly, to, to, to find more stories. And you know what I've always found is that if you want to know what's really going on, Google's not the place to find it. You have to talk That's to local true. people. Local yeah. people know what's going on in the area with weird phenomena. And if you find the right people, they talk about it. Right. And that's one of the reasons why I'm really exciting, excited about traveling around a little bit for this particular show is if we can find the right, if we can find the right recipe of people and strange stories in a particular area, we're going to find. Exactly. Some it's like strange a, stuff a slice of Americana. On. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Absolutely. I know. Yeah, that's where the stories are. People don't talk about them. That's true. Well, I mean, uh, we should probably wrap up this episode of Metaphysical now. Um, I think I don't think this conversation has ended. No, <laughs> I think not. we're probably going to have to. We'll probably uncover. The conversation has got to lead into finding them. Yeah, it does. And like, yeah. where specifically was this guy? You know, the right. search and rescue guy, like that. It'd be great if we could track that down a little bit. But if I were him, I would not talk about where I was either because I wouldn't want anyone yeah. to find that it was me that told those stories. I mean, right. the ritual, like the entire thing just, it wouldn't, you know, like yesterday, you know, that uh, there was a basketball video that we found where it looked like the guy passed some, it was probably a bounce pass, but it looked like he bounced it. You couldn't at all see it on the camera. Right. It, looked, it was just very bizarre looking. So on my Twitter I just was like kind of joking around and I was like, uh, magic question mark. And then I said, um, you know, tech glitch time slip question mark. Right. Like joking around. Right. Cause I'm like, uh, in the back of my head, I'm like, I'm sure there's an explanation for this, but I just thought right. it was funny. And you know, I get somebody commenting on my, on my tweet. That's like, uh, these people just try to find a conspiracy in anything. And I was like, right. is humor a conspiracy too? Like, right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, people are so quick to jump down your... So here it is right here, yeah. Yeah. Um, people are very quick to jump down your throat whenever you question anything that's going on. But the funny thing is, I wasn't even questioning it. I just thought this was like a funny clip, you know? Right. It's bizarre, but I, at the same time, you know... Uh, yeah, you can see it here. Like, the, the camera, the way that the camera was, the way that he bounced past this is it would have to go hit the ground right when his legs were going by and then pop up into his hand. And there's just no... You I, can't don't see, I, can't, I can't see where that ball went at all. So from another angle, from the camera that's over the... Um, from the camera that's over the hoop you can see him bounce pass and it pops up into the guy's hand. But from this angle, you just can't see you can't it. can't see it. Right. That's so weird. Yeah, it is like, it almost looks like he doesn't do anything. Right. Right. Excuse me. <clears throat> anyway, you guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode of metaphysical. Uh, we're not going anywhere. We're going to keep producing these episodes um man we're gonna have a lot chalked up soon and uh, we hope you guys like uh what we're doing here on metaphysical please leave your comments below and let us know what you like about the show and then also what you'd like us to cover on the show and uh, we'll do our best to get that in the queue and make sure that we uh, keep producing some uh episodes that are pretty out of this world and john thanks a lot for being with me here see ya all right. Well, thank you guys. Have a good one and uh, we'll see you soon. And what is it that we said we should say at the end of these shows? Be vigilant. Be vigilant and stay curious. Y yeah, there you go. That's it. All right. See you guys.